So the history of Chiaris, uh, this was first discussed in the 1890s. Um, Hans Chiari uh, noted that there were four different abnormalities uh, that he discovered at the time of the rhombencephalon development. And a lot of them had just common features of impaired CSF flow through the frame and magnum. Uh, so he coined those four different types. Uh, Chiari one, he described as the herniation of the cerebellar tonsils uh, below the level of the frame and magnum. The Chiari two uh, was herniation of the cerebellar vermis, that midline structure, uh, as well as the medulla below the level of frame and magnum. And this was predominantly seen in patients with myelomeningus seals. Uh, Chiari three was an occipital encephalocele and Chiari four was complete absence of the cerebellum. So for the purpose of, of this lecture and for most of the discussion on Chiari's, um, we're going to talk predominantly about the Chiari 1 malformations. Uh, we know that Chiari 2s, um, because of their association with myelomeningocele, uh, we treat them a little bit differently than we do Chiari 1s. So when we're comparing kind of the most common types of those, the Chiari 3s and Chiari 4s are fairly rare. Uh, you know, here's kind of our, our normal with a, a cerebellum and a wide open frame and magnum, lots of room for CSF flow. In the Chiari 1 malformations, you have this herniation of the tonsils down in through the frame and magnum. Uh, the fourth ventricle is obstructed, and then you have the syringomyelia that can develop in the spinal cord. And then with that Chiari 2, this is actually going to be the vermis um, and some of the cerebellar tonsils. You can have some beaking of this tectum right uh, down here, or the beaking of the tectal plate and downward displacement of the uh, brain stem through that area. Um, oftentimes you'll see associated hydrocephalus within that. Um, you see kind of this elongation of the fourth ventricle um, all the way down it as well as the downward displacement um, because it's a true elongation of the entire um, rhombencephalon down, including the medulla. So our Chiari 1 malformation, um, the characteristics like we discussed, it's herniation of the cerebellar tonsils uh, below the frame and magnum. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely symmetric. In fact, uh, oftentimes these patients will have a little bit of asymmetry with one tonsil herniated a little bit more. Um, they can also be associated with many uh, skull base and craniovertebral junction abnormalities, um, atlanto-occipital assimilation or fusion of the uh, C1 to the skull base uh, can be seen in this population, clipal file deformity uh, with abnormalities in the bony elements of the cervical spine. Um, some of these kids will have retroflexion of their dens. And I always say kids because I'm, I'm a pediatric neurosurgeon, but obviously this occurs in adults too. <laughs> Um, you can see ligamentum flavum thickening. You can see issues with fourth ventricle outflow obstruction. Uh, we do see some variation in the tentorial slope, which we think probably has some uh, component to it because we think that this is generally a posterior fossil volume issue. Um, you can see associated syringomyelia and subsequent to that, you can also see associated scoliosis. So over time, we sort of had this evolving understanding of Chiari's. You know, we started with those four. Um, and then we noticed that there were also the subset of patients with a syrinx that didn't have the characteristic features of Chiari, um, but would respond to a Chiari decompression. So um, they sort of made their own little subset. Uh, and then we noticed that there was this other little subset of patients that had kind of some of those same features of the Chiari too, where their brainstem was elongated, it was displaced into the Freeman magnum. Um, the obex of the fourth ventricle was down, um, but it was still the cerebellar tonsils and they didn't have a myelomeningocele. Um, and so there was this kind of like middle group somewhere between that Chiari 1 and Chiari 2. So of course, what do we do? We just added to the classifications, uh, the uh, syringomyelia that responded to a Chiari decompression where there wasn't actually a Chiari naturally became a Chiari 0 and the Chiari that was somewhere in between a Chiari 1 and a Chiari 2 became a Chiari 1.5. Um, so something made sense when they were when they were adding to this classification. So this is kind of the classic Chiari 1.5 malformation. So you see kind of the pons and you see the sort of elongation of the entire medulla. And so this is that medullary bump right at the base. Um, you can see that the fourth ventricle itself is actually elongated and displaced down. This is our retroflex dens. Um, so the frame and magnum is sort of right here. 
Uh, and you still have those cerebellar tonsils herniated down, but this has a little bit of a different morphology than our classic Chiari 1. Um, and oftentimes this is associated with a kyphosis of a craniocervical angle. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that down the road. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.